A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Shiloh, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. What is the role of science and reality in the world of Torah and in the halachic process? The conception that Torah exists in its own separate reality and then on the other hand we have the real world and science etc. This conception is deeply flawed and entirely non-Jewish in origin. The Jewish people and the Jewish religion, the Torah, have never uh, been the carbon copy of the uh, Christian church, the Catholic church for example, that persecuted uh, Galileo and others for speaking clear, plain scientific truths. The Catholic church was opposed to people knowing that that which it had taught in the past, that the earth was in the center of the solar system of the universe and the sun traveled around the earth. The uh, church was opposed to, to this knowledge becoming uh, known to all, to all people because it reflected badly on the church. But Judaism has never adopted that kind of position towards scientific reality. First of all, the Torah does not claim to be a book of science. In the Chachamim, the sages of Am Yisrael have never claimed to be uh, men of science necessarily. Those, there were those amongst them who were men of science and there were those who were not. But uh, a Torah sage is not a scientist. A Torah sage is dealing with what uh, the Gaon, Arab Chaim Tzimmerman of blessed memory described as a truth system. The Torah is a truth system and that truth system relates to the real world. It is an instruction manual for both for human humanity altogether uh, in general and for the Jewish people in particular. It is a manual describing to us how we are to function in the created reality of the universe and the world as we find it before us. And in order for us to know how to function in the world, we must know the reality. And whatever is scientific fact, we accept. That does not mean that a Torah Jew must accept uh, any and all scientific theories or any claim made by someone who calls himself a scientist even if, or even if he is in fact a scientist if it is not fully founded and proved to be so uh, a Torah Jew does not have to accept that which is written in uh, the most recent study which appeared yesterday in the newspaper because we all know unfortunately that uh, next week or next year there might be another study which refutes the first study and therefore the accumulation of objective scientific knowledge, the understanding of reality of the created universe is something which develops over time, evolves, and our knowledge expands, and this is part of Hashem's will in the world. And we, the Jewish people, are part of this reality, and it, is, it goes without saying that we are not opposed to science, and we are not opposed to understanding and knowing and being familiar with reality and living with that reality and taking it into account. It is well known that Maimonides wrote that the more a person knows and understands about the created universe, the reality which Hashem created about us, the more a person understands these things from a scientific perspective, the more a person will appreciate the greatness of the Creator and be able to come closer to Hashem. And this has always been the uh, Torah truth taught by all the great sages of the Jewish people. In the most recent generations, we find that Rav Kook, for example, made some very powerful and explicit statements in this regard, and I will quote one or two of them. In a book published uh, quite some years ago called Kvatsim Miktav Yad Kocho, th these are uh, some writings of Rav Kook that were suppressed, uh, for many years and in recent years have appeared, Baruch Hashem, we find the following in the second uh, section, page 131, uh, clause or paragraph 67. Rav Kook writes, and I translate, Bichlal da'at Hashem, hi gamken da'at kol ha-mesiuth la-mitato. Within 
included within the concept of knowledge of Hashem and the coming closer to Hashem is an understanding of the knowledge of reality in its entirety, a, a true and correct perception of reality. The whole Se'ifeah and all its different manifestations, all parts of the created reality. Kefi yecholeth la'adam, as a person, as a human being is capable of understanding. Alken, therefore, da'ad hateva lechol se'ifeah, says Rav Kook. Knowing the uh, world of nature, understanding the created reality around us in all its complexities, uh, understanding and knowing geography and uh, mathematics and physics and medicine, says Rav Kook, and Chuchmat HaNefesh, which is uh, psychology. Again, this doesn't mean that we have to accept the position of every uh, psychologist or every school in the world of psychology. We know that many of these things are not objective science, but rather matters of subjective opinion, and therefore we always have to make that clear distinction. Yet, there is something called Chuchmat HaNefesh, there is something, uh, a science which deals with the uh, nature of the human soul, the human uh, being as a person, as a being with feelings, with uh, with sensations and uh, needs and requirements beyond the basic physical requirements of, for existence. All these things, uh, says Rav Kook, also knowing history and the uh, different nature and, and uh, achievements of different peoples in, in different nations on earth throughout history, says Rav Kook, Hakol Hinam Michlal Da'at Hashem. All of these things are part of knowledge of and understanding Hashem and understanding His works, understanding the world that He created around us, that we are to work with, that we are to understand, to function in, and to improve and to bring closer to uh, a knowledge of Hashem. Wahem Asmam Avat Hashem. And these, this kind of knowledge and this kind of study, if understood, if under, undertaken with the correct spirit and the correct uh, purpose, this is part of the miswa of loving Hashem. To understand Hashem's work is necessary to, in order to love and to come close to Hashem. And this also brings uh, hum, human beings to a greater appreciation and love for Hashem. It goes without saying that all these types of study and research must be undertaken with the correct approach and attitude. In other words, we are studying and learning about the created reality around us in order to more correctly, more fully understand it, in order to more fully and, fully and correctly understand Hashem's workings, both in the world of nature when it comes to uh, the, the uh, animal kingdom or plants, etc., and also within the realm of human beings to see how how uh, human history has unfolded and why it has unfolded in this way so that we can be part of that process and bring humanity closer to a knowledge of Hashem. With the correct attitude, all of these things are great tools for the furthering of Hashem's aims and the purpose and the destiny of the Jewish people on earth. Rav Kook goes on to say, and he ends this section with the following words, V'chol ma she'ya mehkar yoter hofshi. Yesh bo yoter mishum da'at Hashem v'yoter mevi elo. In other words, Rav Kook says, the more open and unrestricted and intellectually honest the scientific research and the intellectual study and pursuit of different areas of, in, of knowledge and wisdom, the more open and unfettered this study is, the more it will bring to the positive and healthy result of understanding Hashem's ways and workings and the greatness and uh, majesty of Hashem. That's one quote from Rav Kook that uh, it is important that people be aware of and people take to heart. A second quote that I'd like to mention appears in the same book, one page before, and it reads as follows. When great righteous Torah scholars express the view that the uh, dissemination of general knowledge and science and uh, intellectual undertaking within the Jewish people, within the Torah world, is a positive and healthy phenomenon which is necessary, even though there were views, and there still are such positions in the world of Torah today, which oppose such uh, endeavors. Rav Kook says this position of endorsing uh, and embracing uh, all manner of wisdom and science and understanding and study. When we do this, L'shem Shamaim says Rav Kook, with, with the aim of furthering 
the aims of Hashem in this world and the, and the purpose of the Jewish people in this world, Me'irim al Yedeze Orosh al Mashiach. This uh, increases the uh, beginning of the appearance of the light of Mashiach, of Yemoth Mashiach in, in this world. Hanikra ben Parsi. He is known, the Mashiach is known as ben Parsi, which literally means the one who breaks forth, who breaks out of the shell, who breaks out of the the uh, box into which he uh, had been placed or into which reality has been placed. In other words, Rav Kook is saying that the position which uh, endeavored to shut down and uh, very se severely limit, at least, the uh, knowledge of uh, general human knowledge and understanding within the Jewish people and within the Torah world, this position is not a true and faithful representation of the of the Torah's position, the, the, the position of the Jewish people, and of great Torah scholars in these generations, when we uh, come closer to the time of Yomoth Mashiach, says Rav Kook, is to explain that this position was perhaps necessary, and uh, was was intended to achieve a good end at that, at some time and some point in history. But today, it leads only to the opposite. It leads to a dulling and uh, besmirching of the Torah rather than uh, building the Torah and increasing its influence in the world. And therefore we must strive for a reality in which Torah and science and knowledge in general go hand in hand. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message, and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one. If you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Israel, or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.